I think you're right that uh, the odds of it happening seem to be slight, but because we've been through this before. But I think that the I think that Treasury Secretary Yellen sort of made it sound to Congress just yesterday that it'd be disastrous. You know, uh, back uh, about 10 years ago or so, uh, the U.S. was also going through something similar. It finally worked its way out of it. But just because of the process, <laughs> excuse me, is when the U.S. lost its AAA rating. S&P cut the U.S.'s rating, not because of a default, but because of this putting the people to the edge once again. So if 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 something happens and the politicians in the U.S. cannot resolve this and the U.S. misses a debt payment, I think we'll see. I think we'll see uh, like ramifications, like ripple effects throughout the uh, throughout the world, because the anchor, one of the strongest anchors, has, has broken. Uh, at the same time, remember it's the same thing with the uh, Evergrande's debt that the market seems to be focused on. Uh, we, we sort of think that uh, for governments or for businesses, you, you're a day late on an interest payment, and that counts as default. It doesn't. And a lot of these clauses, and a lot of the contracts, they allow for like a 30-day grace period. Think about what happens. You get your credit card uh, statement one day, and they give you several weeks to pay it. Businesses often pay 60 or even 90 days after they get the invoice. So we should take, we, we should like uh, try to keep it in perspective. But I think you're right that when it comes to the markets, we think about risk as being volatility. But when it comes to these kind of things, uh, politics especially, it seems that it's a combination. It's a it's a factor. It's a it's a product of credibility. How how likely is it from happening, and how serious is it? So I'd say in this case, it's very serious if it happens. But the risk still seems to be very low. And by very low, as we sit here today, uh, the dollar is making new highs for the year against the yen, the euro, and the British pound. The U.S. interest rates are well are higher, of course, since the Federal Reserve signaled they could begin tapering as early as uh, November. But I'd say that the recent auctions of the coupons have been fairly strong. There has been some disruption in the U.S. bill market. People trying to avoid that middle of October, a period in which uh, Yellen has suggested that, that that's when the debt ceiling actually begins biting. For various reasons, the U.S., the largest economy, a wealthy, rich, uh, middle class, a strong military, a strong history, strong resources, and all the debt that the U.S. has is in U.S. dollars unlike some other countries that sometimes borrow foreign currencies. So I think that uh, in some countries, it's a, it's a question of, do they have the resources to service their debt? In the U.S., it becomes a question of political will. Bismarck once said that in a democracy, you shouldn't see the way laws or sausages are made. And I think the same applies to this fiscal process. It's very strange, uh, idiosyncratic. No other country goes through this. Uh, and it's very much about politics. For example, right now the Democrats want this want to lift the debt ceiling to be a bipartisan decision. Well, back around the early 2000s, uh, President Biden was a senator, and the majority of the Senate now, Schumer, both of them voted against lifting the debt ceiling to make the Republicans do it by themselves. So to me, this is just a, a strange. I can't really fully explain this political uh, process that we have here. It seems it seems uh, strange and not something that would be uh, tolerated in most other countries. And so maybe when we talk about American exceptionalism, it's not just about these great things that America has achieved, but it's also about the strange conduct of fiscal policy. For some, that could be a risk of ruin. Uh, but I think that... Uh, just looking at how orderly the market is, I think if the market was uh, very afraid, it thought it was a, a, like a, a distinct possibility even, I think we'd see a bigger reaction. And and so, I, again, I think that if the politicians are playing brinkmanship, the brinkmanship sort of requires to go to the brink. And I think that's where we are. And it's scary always when you're at the brink. Uh, but like I say, we've been here before. And uh, But I, I think you're right. If, if, if so, if... Uh, 
if we get through the uh, middle of October and uh, no debt ceiling has been lifted yet, uh, what happens if the U.S. misses the payment? I think they would see a big jump, especially in bill yields. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, more than one rating agency, or maybe I should say another rating agency, would probably downgrade the U.S. And I think it maybe it's a bit like toothpaste. You know, mm -hmm. once it gets squeezed out of the tube, it's very mm -hmm. difficult to put it back in. So uh, there's two things really going on. One is, as you say, to to stay within the debt ceiling because you know what happened was uh, the debt ceiling was in place and then it was sort of like suspended and it came back into the fore, came back effective. And so since it's become effective, the U.S. Treasury has done things to stay within it. For example, reduce the amount of bills that's issuing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what the Federal Reserve has in mind for extraordinary uh, measures, but it's quite clear right now that the Federal Reserve is still buying $80 billion with the Treasuries a month and $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities. I think what Chairman Powell was saying before Congress was that uh, if the politicians can't do the right thing and if there is, uh, if it unsettles the markets, and it's unsettling that the key part of the market is the U.S. Treasury market, that the Federal Reserve could respond by trying to support the market, by trying to ensure that people could make settlements. And so uh, it's, a very, it's important that uh, I think that both the, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve is well aware of the challenges and what and it's like on guard for a disruption. And while the uh, Congress is trying to figure a way around this.